The Bretton Woods Agreement of 1944 determined that the US dollar would act as the world reserve currency. What did this mean? The global energy market would have to be denominated in dollars in exchange for US military protection of trade routes around the world, thus stabilizing the flow of energy to a world in the process of rebuilding following World War II. As a result, everybody wanted dollars thus giving the US complete control of the global currency, allowing them to do as they please and have been doing for the past 75 years. But change is in the air. And what if Putin's seemingly lackluster invasion of Ukraine actually moves the world one step closer towards a changing world order? In March of 2022, Russia's invasion of Ukraine seemed on the surface as a seamless act of Russian aggression, similar to that seen previously in the Crimea region. But what if this marked the next stage in the decline of the US's authoritarian global grip? Following Russia's invasion, the US froze payments on over $600 million in Russian government foreign US Treasury reserves. Whilst this seems like an arbitrary number, considering the size of the Russian economy, it sent shockwaves around the world, confirming that the world's safest place for governments to park their reserves is not really that safe. Furthermore, the world is starting to wake up to the fact that US physical spending and money printing is absolutely unsustainable. The fact that the rest of the world trades their physical commodities in exchange for US paper promises that can be printed and debased at will is a bad deal for the exporter, and they are starting to realise. Putin has been very open about this subject, stating in a recent speech that the economy of imaginary wealth is being inevitably replaced by the economy of real and hard assets. Putin has attempted to move away from the US sphere since the beginning of the conflict, as Russia no longer accepts US dollars for energy exports, but demands payment in the Russian ruble alongside other currencies. Not only has this strengthened the ruble to levels not seen since 2018, but it challenges the accepted petrodollar system that has been in place since the Second World War. Previous attempts to utilize a sovereign currency for energy transactions have been attempted, such as by former Libyan leader Muammar Gaddafi, who wanted to establish a pan-African currency backed up by precious metals. But we all know how that ended. After the 2008 financial crisis, the US's subsequent quantitative easing program was a sign to the world that this printing would be the new status quo, and countries like China were no longer willing to put up with it. Therefore, since 2013, instead of parking their trade surpluses in US treasuries that return a real negative yield, China have invested into a range of infrastructure projects around the world via its Belt and Road Initiative. Whilst China are still the second largest holder of US treasuries, their significant reduction in this position is a clear signal that the world is moving away from the economy of imaginary wealth. What this means for the US, however, is that they will have to fund more of their own deficits going into the future through borrowing. But how long can this go on for? The world is in a debt spiral, and nothing exemplifies this more than the United States. If US interest rates peak at 4.5%, as the Federal Reserve have suggested, assuming that a third of their debt would be rolled over at these levels, the United States would have to fork out nearly $1 trillion in interest payments per year alone, more than they spend on their entire military. This inevitably leads to more borrowing as the cycle of fiat devaluation continues. The surprise withdrawal from Afghanistan and the US's less willing stance to be involved in ongoing foreign conflicts is a sign that it can no longer afford to act as the global police, as it has done previously. Whilst the last decade has exposed cracks in the US empire, other countries have their own problems, whether this be debt-related, political instability, or a mixture, there are no clear winners, supporting the idea that the next decades may see a multipolar world with several superpower nations as opposed to just one. As the American political scientist Joseph Nye said, the world is neither unipolar, multipolar, nor chaotic. 
it's all three at the same time. Thank you for watching Olive Stripe Productions. If you found this video educational or interesting, feel free to like and share the video with your friends. To check out more future content on a wide range of exciting relevant topics, please subscribe to our channel.